Oh, guys, welcome back, Bless to be. Don't, don't I look glorious? Kind of have, like, some of the lights off, because it's late. I just got off a bath, so I'm, I'm sure I look great, but um, don't miss the message for the messenger. I uh, kind of wanted to talk to you. Let me just the camera a little. kind of wanted to talk to you about um, how I came into witchcraft. And this is going to probably be a long story, so you might want to, you know, grab your favorite beverage. Um, back when I was super teeny tiny, back in the late 70s, early 80s, I did what, I want to call it natural witchcraft, because that's the best two words I can think of for it. And what it was, was I would, um, and I was a teeny tiny little girl, maybe I was in kindergarten, maybe I was even younger, but I would get, like, mud and I would make these circle discs and I'll put stones and leaves and stuff in it just so. And I would pat it together and maybe I may even made up magic words. I don't know. And I knew it was something, but I didn't know what it was. Um, remember, very different time. I had no idea what mooncakes or anything were. And I would take sticks and I would put them in a circle or, you know, put them in a pattern or something. And I'd be very happy and very excited and I would know it was magic and I wouldn't know how. Now maybe this is a universal thing. Maybe all kids go through a making magic phase. But I don't even know where I picked it up unless my mom had read me fairy tales or I read them myself or um you know I saw it on TV or a movie or something but it always felt natural. And it always felt like whoever was watching me, because I would feel a lot of times like somebody was watching me, that they were happy that it, it, I was doing the right thing. And I had no idea what I was doing. I had no idea, like, magic and witchcraft were real. But I felt like I was doing the right thing. Okay, fast forward. And... I grew up in a very, very Catholic, very... Christian area and back in my time there you know no internet I know that's scary <laughs> and the only 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 books you could get on witchcraft were about the Salem witch trials or maybe the Spanish Inquisition if they were feeling adventurous so imagine having that your only source on witches and magic and you know you're a witch and you know these are wrong, but you can't say why they're wrong. And you keep checking them out, and you keep, like, looking through them to try to find, like, the hidden knowledge. Because you know what they have in them is total BS. But you're, you're trying to figure out, how, how do I make this magic thing work? Now remember, there were no books on Wicca, there were no books on paganism, this is a very Christian area, magic is evil. So... Luckily, Satan never showed up in all of his infernal glory or anything. But suffice it to say, that was not magic. Um, fast forward a little more, and they're doing the obligatory thing about the Norse and Greco-Roman gods. Now, it's, I always love to read, and I already knew I liked the Egyptian gods. And I'd kind of always, kind of, tiny bit felt best at, with me. And communicating with me and in fact she has a favorite gargoyle <laughs> she liked that for her statue instead of like a traditional cat statue and um we i was sitting in this one class one day and they were like talking about the greco-roman gods and the way the teacher talked about them you know about how foolish they were and how argumentative they were and how spiteful they were and everything else i just felt so much love and compassion come over me because remember i was raised with the all-powerful one and only god that never made a mistake and that didn't like humans because we were sinful and here were these gods you know struggling along like we were they were making mistakes they were falling in love with the wrong people they, they were perfect in the omniscient, omnipotent, I never made a mistake sense, 
but they didn't have careful 2,000 years of careful editing either. And we probably have stories of them that have been heavily Christianized, even though we don't think they have been. Uh, and I don't want to debate that if you're purely Greco-Roman pantheon. I, I personally would not know. But um, I promised them that, you know, if they weren't dead, because it teacher kind of said, like, all these gods had died. And I didn't understand how gods could die. And maybe that's where I got my interest in the underworld gods. Because I was like, I am going on a rescue mission. And I am going to find these gods. And I'm going to rescue them. And I made them a promise. Solemn promise. I'm trying not to cry. But that if I ever found them. Ever found them. I would work with them. And worship them. And take care of them. Because I had no idea people still worked and worshipped them. And I, I promised them that. And when you make a promise like that to the gods, they will eventually show up and, you know, collect because you mean it. And I truly meant it. I meant it. It was like, um, I couldn't see why everybody had taken this one god and thrown out all their, their old gods. I, I didn't understand anything about the world at the time. Um, you know, maybe I was just going into junior high or something by and understand how politics and religion go together and such worth and such not. But I couldn't figure out why all these gods have been abandoned and nobody loved them anymore. And how, how could they have been bad if somebody had loved them at one time? And I'm like trying not to cry again. Um, so now, enter now, and you know, I've gone through, well, not enter now. Back up a little bit. When I finally did start practicing witchcraft, it was the Greco-Roman gods I worked with. And it was pretty much a disaster because I had no idea what I was doing. I didn't have the experience I have today. And it was a shrine to be Catholic and a witch at the same time. And I know I say don't pick on uh, Christo Wiccas or whatever. And I, I still say that. But it doesn't work because one side is telling you damned for all time if you practice witchcraft. And the other uh, side is kind of like flipping off the church. And it's like, it, it's not going to work. You can't find that imaginary middle ground because you either have to believe in one thing or the other. And we all go through that when we transition. We try to make that middle ground. <laughs> we, we really do. And people either end up being a witch that is calls herself a white witch and uses her magic under Jesus or something, and I, I don't judge. Or you end up being a pagan that's like really hurt and confused, and if I'm not damned to hell, you know, where am I going? And you have all this sorting out to do. But, you know, they were gracious. They were very gracious that I kept stumbling and falling in. Well, not Athena. Athena kept getting mad. She's like, Let's go, let's go, let's get with the program, dump JC by the road, let's go. And I, was, nah, 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 nah. And I love Athena, I love her to death, but she's kind of like a segment that she doesn't have the most patience with you when you're hesitating. I mean, she goes out to war, of course she doesn't. So, you know, that, that didn't work out too well, and... You know, you, you have the gods being friendly to you, and then you have other people telling you, like your parents and other adults and everything when they finally find out, oops, that you're going to hell and these are demons and blah, blah, blah. So finally, now we can fast forward. Fast forward to today. And i had been having the Greco-Roman gods come back in, as I told you. Now, I know people today say, a lot of people say, pick a pantheon and stick with it. That was just never my experience. I can go to any pantheon in the world and maybe one or two gods will work with me, but that's it. I don't have a pantheon charming personality. I've never had one pantheon say, you're you're finally home, you're home, this is the end of your journey. They're like, oh, we'll go with you a little way, but you got a lot more work to do. Isn't that awesome? And I'm like, no, no. So, you know, I went through kind of like, Egypt and Vesta and Anubis were the two stuff were there to work with me. Isis as well. Uh, Sekhmet, of course, um, but not the whole entire pantheon. Um, same thing, Greco-Roman gods. Some gods were very sweet and gracious. Some gods are kind of meh. And some gods just didn't even bother showing up. 
And that's fine. We we aren't all going to get along with all gods. And if you were forced to, like, silly example, but if you were forced to spend a week in an elevator with them, one of you would probably be dead at the end. And it wouldn't be the god. <laughs> so, the same thing happened with the Norse gods. There are some I like, and there are some I'm miffed to, and there's some, you know, I could do without, and some kind of act the same way towards me. And it's okay. You're not going to get along, and there's no extra brownie points for getting along with everybody. Um, you know, we're pagans. It doesn't have to happen. We don't have to go over and kiss Yahweh's Heine because he's a god. It's like, no, 2,000 years of your crap, you out of here. And it's like, you could, oh, he's not that bad. It's his church who made him bad. Mm. Uh, if you want to go back to pre-biblical Elohim, and that's a can of worms right there because you probably can't unpack all that psychological garbage, but we're getting off topic. Um, now I have the Greco-Roman gods coming in and making themselves a home, and I kind of balked at it, and Loki showed up kind of in Mama Fox for me, still with his male energy, but he was snarling at me, and I saw this gigantic snarling fox, and he was snapping his teeth, and I said, Mama Fox is here, and he's like, oh yes, Mama Fox is here, and I kind of had an image of me being a tiny fox cub, and I just flipped over, and I was like this, you know, like how the fox cub surrenders because Mama has had enough of his BS, and she's gonna kill him, that's what I did. And he was like, you you are a tiny little thing. You are a tiny fox cub. You do not tell the gods what to do. And rah, 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 you know. But he, he had a point. Um, you know, we can try to start living the way other humans tell us. And it doesn't work too, long, too well. And what the gods were telling me is, look, you made this promise. Some of us are going to come collect. Now, that doesn't mean... Um, you know, I'm going to have this life-altering experience, even though it is certainly life-altering to have a giant fox show up and snap at you. Um, but it does mean that the Greco-Roman gods will get settled in. Now, again, it, I've had experiences in the past where gods come in very intensely, and they want to work with you, and they want to work with you, and then you just wake up one day, and they're nowhere. And you're like, was that Loki, or was that just this this I lost the connection I kind of akin it to having a radio and sometimes you can tune in and sometimes you can't and sometimes the radio don't work at all and sometimes it blares to life at two in the morning gives you heart attack <laughs> so that that's where we are now I have this very strange pantheon of uh you know I have the Vudon and Santeria spirits that I work with I have you know uh, Norse gods, uh, I have a little from Egypt, a little from Greece and Rome, um, and that's what's working for me. I'm, pr I'm probably leaving someone out there, and I'm going to get it tonight, like, when I'm in the altar room. <laughs> but, you know, that, that's that been my journey, and we, oh god, I thought this was going to take like 40 minutes. It's kind of sad when your whole life can be summed up in under 20 <laughs> But uh, I guess kind of felt a push to put this out there because I, I do this weird thing of doing these out loud, usually while I'm taking a bath. And I figured I would let this one be. And as I'm like, you know, finishing up everything because I did another bath, like, you know, like ritual. The door just suddenly closes. I'm like, okay, Rokey, fine. I'll do, I'll do the video. But, but yeah, I've had a very eclectic um, journey, which you know is sometimes why I can be both mad at someone for being so stupid <laughs> and sympathetic too. Because if you, if you're doing it, I've probably done it, and. You know, the calmer heads around here are always trying to tell me just because it was wrong for you doesn't mean it's wrong for them. And I'm like, yeah, but they're being stupid. And I have no tolerance for stupid. <laughs> like, I'm not always the most compassionate person, especially in the morning. And I haven't ha had my coffee and I get a notification. I'm like, no, what is this nonsense? But yeah, um, 
I, I've probably been everywhere. I probably came off as one of those spooky kids to the ultra-conservative Christians that taught in the schools. And God knows, I probably came off as an utter idiot to the Greek gods, but they never treated me with anything but kindness. Well, you know, got kind of impatient. And, you know, I've been everywhere in the spectrum, which is, like I said, why I sometimes can have tolerance or ignore something. And sometimes I get really mad because I'm like, you're doing it wrong. And I know because I've been there. Okay, guys. Um, I, ho I hope you like that. And personally, I don't care who you put together on your altar. I don't care if you work with one pantheon or if you work with every pantheon. I don't care if you seriously believe in Santa Claus and the Easter Bunny and the Thanksgiving Turkey of Joy. If it makes you happy, do it. But, um, yeah, that's about it. I figured I'd share that with you. So if you guys like what you see, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you later. Bye-bye.